The momentum of a moving body is the product of its mass and velocity. Momentum is a vector quantity. The direction of the momentum vector is the direction of the velocity at any given instant. The SI unit of momentum is the Newton second. By considering Newton's second law of motion for a body changing its velocity under the action of a constant force, we can see that force is equal to the rate of change of momentum. Impulse is the time-related effect of a force. The quantity Ft is the impulse of the force F which is acting for time t. Impulse equals the change in momentum. Impulse is a vector quantity. The SI unit of impulse is the Newton second. We have seen that Newton's laws apply to any motion, however it is caused. They apply whether the force producing the motion or change in motion is constant or variable. As before, when the force varies in a known way, it is possible to represent the motion by a differential equation. Consider a variable force that causes a particle to change its velocity in an interval of time. The integral of the force with respect to time gives the impulse of the force. When a variable force, F, acts on a body for time t, such that F is a function of t, the impulse exerted by the force is as shown. When F is constant, the impulse is equal to F times t. The principle of conservation of linear momentum is stated as follows. The total momentum of a system is constant in any direction, provided no resultant external force acts in that direction. This is true in systems containing any number of bodies. Usually systems with two or three bodies are considered, and the principle is often expressed as either initial momentum equals final momentum, or the momentum before and after a collision is the same. When two bodies collide, they may either coalesce or rebound. If two bodies collide and coalesce, we say that the collision is inelastic. If two bodies collide and rebound, we say that the collision is elastic. Newton formulated a law known as the law of restitution, based upon experiment. The quantity represented by E in the equation is the coefficient of restitution and is a constant for any two particular bodies. For colliding particles, E can take any value from 0 to 1. The value of E depends upon the material of the colliding bodies. If E is 0, then the collision is inelastic. If E is 1, then the collision is perfectly elastic. In a perfectly elastic collision, there is no loss of mechanical energy during the collision. Most collision calculations do involve a loss in mechanical energy. If a smooth sphere travelling at right angles to a surface collides with it, we say that a direct impact has occurred. The surface exerts an impulse on the sphere, and if the impact is elastic, the particle rebounds. The approach speed of the sphere is u, and the rebound speed is v. The impulse imparted by the surface is i. From the law of restitution, v equals e u, where e is the coefficient of restitution. Also, impulse equals change in momentum equals final momentum minus initial momentum. Taking the direction of the impulse as positive, i can be calculated as shown.
Another example of a direct impact is when two smooth spheres moving along the same line collide. This can occur when the spheres are moving in the same direction, in opposite directions, or with one sphere stationary. In all cases, the law of conservation of momentum and the law of restitution may be applied. When elastic collisions occur, there is usually a loss in mechanical energy of the components of the system during the collision. The change in mechanical energy can be found by calculating the kinetic energy of the system before and after the collision. When a moving body experiences a constant force in one direction and a constant velocity at right angles to the force, it moves in a parabola. The body shown here is projected from the origin with initial velocity u at an angle theta to the horizontal. It is subjected to a vertical force due to gravity, but its horizontal velocity is not affected by this and remains constant. We can resolve the components of the initial velocity into the x and y directions respectively to analyze the motion of the body. Doing this allows us to consider the vertical and horizontal motion separately. When the body is in motion, the only force acting on it is due to gravity. It therefore experiences a constant acceleration equal to the acceleration due to gravity. Knowing that when the body reaches its maximum height, the vertical component of the velocity is zero, allows us to calculate the value of the maximum height reached. The time taken to reach the maximum height can be found by using the equation v equals u plus at. The total time of flight is double the time taken to reach the maximum height. If the air resistance is ignored, the horizontal component of the initial velocity remains constant. The horizontal distance travelled equals the horizontal velocity multiplied by the time of the flight. For a given velocity, the range is found to be a maximum when the angle of projection is 45 degrees above the horizontal. In the diagram below, the body is at point B at time t after being projected from the origin. The expression for the trajectory of the body is derived here and is in the form y equals ax plus bx squared, where a and b are constants for a given velocity and angle of projection. This is the general equation of a parabola.